This is part 55 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the use of complete parameter of jQuery load function. This is continuation to part 54, so please watch part 54 before proceeding with this video. From the previous sessions in this video series, we have learned that jQuery load function has got three parameters, URL, data, and complete. If you look at the example that we worked with in the previous video session, notice that at the moment this jQuery load function is only using the first two parameters. The first parameter here represents the URL to which we want to send the request and the second parameter represents the data that we want to send to the server. At the moment we are not using this third parameter complete. So this parameter represents a callback function that is executed when the request completes. This callback function has got three parameters response, status, and XML HTTP request object. If the request completes successfully, then this response parameter will contain the response of that request. In case if there is an exception, then this response parameter will contain the information about that exception. Status parameter will tell us if there is an error or if the request has completed successfully. This XML HTTP request contain information about status, status text, etc. Let's look at an example. At the moment, you know, the load function here is not using the third parameter complete, right? So whenever any of these fields receives focus, we get the help text associated with that field displayed immediately, right? Now let's go ahead and change this code. Now I'm going to change the name of this stored procedure, right? And let's go ahead and build the solution. So at the moment, in SQL Server, database, we don't have a stored procedure with this name. So when this code executes, we will get an exception, right? And let's see what's going to happen when we get an exception. Let's reload this page and look at this. When these fields receives focus, nothing happens. We don't get any information about that exception, right? We don't get the help text and we don't get any information about that exception that has occurred. Right? So if you want to know whether the request has completed successfully or not, then we can make use of this third parameter complete. Right? So let's go ahead and use that now. So within our HTML page, I'm going to use the third parameter, the callback function. And this function has three parameters. So the first parameter is the response. The second parameter is the status. And the third parameter is the XML HTTP request object. Now what I want to do is retrieve status, status, text, and response, and display that within a div element. So to this HTML, I'm actually going to add a div element next to the table. So let's include a break element here, and then include a div, and let's give it an ID. Let's call this maybe uh, div status. And we want to display that information uh, within this div element, all right? So now here, so within this callback function, I'm going to create a variable. Let's call this maybe error message or let's call this status. Status message equals. Now we have three parameters that are coming into this function, response status and XML HTTP request object. So I'm going to use you know, I'm actually going to build a string here. So first I want the request status. So status equals, I can use the XML HTTP request object dot status is going to give us status and I'm going to include an HTML break. And let's actually make a copy of this. And status message plus equals, next I want status text and again, we can use status text property of the XML HTTP request object. And finally, we want to you know, display whatever response we get. So again, let's make a copy of this. And response equals you know, the response parameter. OK, and we can get rid of this last HTML break. All right. And what we want to do, we want to display the status message within the div element. And div element has got an ID. So that is div status. So let's copy that. And let's find the div element by ID. So let's use the jQuery ID selector. 
find the div element and I'm going to use the HTML function and to this function let's pass the status message alright so let's save the changes let's go ahead and reload this page and look at this now um, when the first name receives focus look at that we get the status 500 and look at the status text internal server error and look at the error message could not find stored procedure sp get help text by key one so this is information is very useful to the developer and straight away we know that once we correct that name let's go ahead and correct that let's build the solution and let's reload this page and look at this when the text box receives focus now we should get the help text associated with that field and look at the status 200 status text is okay and the response is nothing but you know whatever we get the that is the help text right now let's go ahead and change for example the name of the URL to which we want to send the request now let's change this to get help text one dot ASPX now if you look at our application we don't have a page with that name so now we should get page not found exception so let's save the changes let's reload this page and look at this now we get status as 404 page not found and look at this we get that message saying the resource cannot be found and straight away you know when we get this 404 we know that you know the page to which we are sending the request cannot be found so we correct that and when we reload you know it should successfully execute the request okay now at the moment you know the code that is present within the this callback function this piece of code is executed irrespective of whether there is an exception or not now if the request completes successfully uh, you know we don't want this code to be executed we want this code to be executed only if there is an error if that's your requirement then you can make use of this status parameter so basically you can check that's a string parameter so basically we can say if status equals error only then execute this code right so let's save the changes let's go ahead and reload this page and look at this now when the request completes successfully nothing is displayed within this development that's because this piece of code will not be executed on the other hand if we have an exception so let's change the name of the file reload this and look at this if we have an error then the error information is displayed within that development so at the moment we get 404 error so if you want to conditionally execute the code present in the callback function you can use the status parameter thank you for listening and have a great day